When it comes to compliance, your Contact Us page is the most important page to show how transparent you are as a business. Google looks at your Contact Us page simply. Legitimate businesses are easy to contact. That's why in this video, you're going to learn how to show Google that you are running a legitimate business. You'll also learn the big red flags that show Google that you're not legitimate. And if Google sees these, they're not gonna show your business to its searches. To do this, we're gonna go through the three things you absolutely must have on your Contact Us page. Then I'll go through the three things you need to have to keep your risk meter low. Now let's get started with the three things you need to have on your contact us page. One, your business name. Google wants to know what business entity is behind the website. If you don't disclose this information, then Google can deem your website to be untrustworthy due to lack of transparency. So clearly put the name of your business on this page. Just including the domain name of your business will not do. So if your legal business name is something like XYZ LLC or ABC Incorporated or 123 Holdings Limited, then that is the name that you clearly need to have on your contact us page. Keep in mind that if you have a legally registered trade name, also known as a DBA, doing business as, then you can also use this instead. Always be sure to consistently use the same name when you sign up and use all your marketing platforms like Google Ads, Google Analytics, and Google Merchant Center. Don't let Google see variations of your business name across their platforms. This is going to show up in their data and be flagged. Number two, business address. This must be a physical location where you operate your business. Google believes that businesses that don't offer their physical address provide a poor experience for their users. So while it's not technically mandated in their policy, if you have a phone number and email address on your website, it does raise your risk meter and it could make it harder to advertise if you get suspended. Some people try to use a PO box or a rented mailbox. Since you can't work out of a mailbox, Google sees this as an instant red flag and they will not accept it. They will just map the data that you give them about your address using their Google Maps data. And they're very good at finding out where the rented mailboxes are. And be careful because if Google ever suspects that you're using a false location for your business, it will result in an immediate suspension. Three, your business phone number. Your phone number is where buyers and prospective buyers can call in and be serviced. Ideally, this number is wholly dedicated towards your business, but that's not critical. What is critical is that when people call that number, they feel that they're reaching the business that runs that website. Meaning they hear the business name when they answer, and if there's no one there to take the call, they can leave a message. Just like with your business name and your address, I recommend that you use the same business phone number across all your Google accounts. Having these three things on your contact us page ensures you meet the minimum threshold to be considered a legitimate business by Google for your Google shopping campaigns. Now let's cover the three other recommended things to have on your contact us page to reduce your risk meter even further. One, business email. It's ideal for customers that don't wanna call you up or send you a postcard to be able to email you from your contact us page. In fact, the majority of today's shoppers actually prefer text-based communication over using the phone. Your business support email should be your actual domain. It shouldn't be a Gmail domain, Outlook, or Yahoo. And it's a good idea to make it into a link when presented on the page so that people can click it and it opens up their mail client and they can easily send their email straight from there. Two, hours of operation. Let your buyers know, and Google, when you're available to answer and reply to calls and reply to emails. This demonstrates even further to Google that you're reachable and there to serve your customers even more. Make sure that what you put here is accurate and up to date and matches your Google business listing if you have one. And don't forget to include your time zone too. Three, set expectations. Clearly state what will happen and what the user will expect when they email or send a message. Will you reply within one business day? That's fine, just be upfront and let them know that that's the time frame that they can expect. If you prefer to receive phone calls during operating hours and receive emails after operating hours, let them know. Google's system is quite clever and can pass this information to see that you're being informative and supportive of the people that are trying to contact you. Those were the three things to meet in order to exceed Google's method for determining how transparent your business is. Combine and follow these two lists to be gauged as a low risk experience for Google's shoppers 
coming through its search pages. Now, some common problems that I see with store owners is that they fear being contacted. They might have a day job, and so they can't field calls while they're working, so they don't put a phone number up on their website. Sending calls to voicemail is absolutely acceptable. And as long as you always return calls, you don't actually need to answer the phone. Just make sure that your answering message clearly states that they've reached your business name. Another problem I see is store owners' hesitation to give out their home address. Some worry that it devalues their legitimacy, but Google is totally okay with home-based businesses, especially in a post-pandemic world. Others worry that returns will be sent to their home. This can happen, but just include a little bit of text next to your address, instructing returns not to be sent to it. You can then include a link to your returns policy page with information on how to actually return. Other business owners simply fear exposing their location on the internet. In this case, consider renting a cheap office somewhere. There might be some relatively low cost solutions in your area, so have a look. Alternatively, you can ask your friend or neighbor if you could use their address as your base of operations. You don't actually have to go there or work out of their house, but you can use their address similar to a registered agent's office. Now you have the three must have elements to go onto your contact us page. One, business name. Two, address. Three, phone number, and the three recommended elements to reach a higher legitimacy with Google being one, a business email, two, hours of operation, three, setting expectations. This video that you've just watched is actually part of our key commerce Google Shopping course. And we're currently improving this course to make it the best course ever on Google Shopping campaigns for e-commerce stores. Each lesson is jam packed with the strategies and advice that you need to grow your store with Google Shopping campaigns. I'll leave a link to the course below. It's not actually live just yet. We're still working and improving this course, but you can sign up for notifications so you will know when we launch and even get a pre-launch discount. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful. If it was, give it a like, let me know in the comments below and check out my other videos on Google Shopping campaigns. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.